without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Simon and Denny. Excellent, Alrighty. Simon. Simon, you're the beacon. Why don't you go ahead and kick <laughs> us off? Uh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, plan things. What's going on? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share a thing. Share well, while thing? you're sharing thing, why not I provide some context? How's that? Okay. So, the context for everybody, yes, is that in the previous session we had went ahead and built our silver table. What we did was using a notebook, and if you'll follow even some of the banter that Simon and I were talking about, some of the designs or the code that was written was suboptimal. I believe that was the correct phrasing without getting too insulting. Is that correct, Simon? <laughs> yes. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't care to comment, you know. Yeah, of course not. Okay. So because <laughs> the code base was suboptimal, all of the notebooks, but it was good for our prototype purpose. One of the things that is of concern is saying, well, well, how do you productionize that? So we we in in one of the previous sessions we also talked about autoloader, about loading that data into our system and then like I said, we ran a bunch of notebooks in a suboptimal fashion to basically build our silver and gold tables. But now you're turning around like, but I'd love, you know, Simon and Denny, and Simon specifically, you know, I'd love to go ahead and actually build this in production, make it production worthy. I don't, I don't want this, you know, this prototype foo-foo code, right? So that's why we're building, rebuilding this. I'm sorry, Simon's rebuilding this, and I'm offering color commentary in Delta Live tables. Now, this is one example, obviously. You can obviously do this in notebooks if you wanted to, but this allowed us to do two things at once. One is to talk about how to make the code base more production worthy. The other is to uh, allows us to shamelessly plug Delta Live tables as well at the exact same time. So, so without further ado, Simon, why don't you go ahead and, you know, sure. actually go ahead and explain this stuff. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a step back from too production worthy, given this is a preview product, which is not yet production worthy. <laughs> we'll talk about that when it's in GA. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely, right? Technicality. Technicality. <laughs> Getting it to the point when it is, will actually just work. Yes. We'll just yes. work and we're happy and it's good and it's, it's it's a lot kind of more repeatable. So, oh, there we go, whiteboard mode. Oh, so, nice. What we had done, so we have our, like, our landing area and this is getting lots and lots and lots of files coming in. And we had used Autoloader. So we're using Autoloader, so that's the Databricks tech that's doing all the file notification stuff. It's checking a little message queue, it's working out all those files that are coming in. And we're putting that into our bronze table. And we've got a whole notebook that's basically doing all that, that we've built in previous Build of Things sessions. And then the thing that was uh, less good, uh, <laughs> it's the thing that was going into this silver table. Um, and that was using SQL, and that was kind of showing how we do that shaping of stuff. So we've currently got that. That, that is an existing thing with a load of code, lots of code all around the place. It's, it's running when we have these sessions and we remember to hit go on it and we run it. And yeah, we need to make it more production grade. That's, that's what we're talking about. So Delta Live Tables. We're going to set this up as one Delta Live Table pipeline. Plan. So this is going to have a little chain of events. So we've still got our initial landing. So that landing area, with well, lots of things coming in. We're not changing that, but we're going to build a. It's got to be, it's got to be rainbow sparkles for Delta Light over, right? So we're going to build going into a bronze area, going and cleaning that, and managing our expectations in terms of applying the data quality and building that in. And you'll, if you've not seen anything about Delta Light tables, you'll find out why that's funny when we get to it. Because you know, I apologize. I forgot to go. <laughs> my, my bad. My timer was off. My apologies. My apologies. My bad. Uh, and then we're going to put that into a nice shiny gold table. So we'll still have that same idea of having a bronze, having a silver, having a gold table going through. But that is now just one Delta live table pipeline when it's working. So, you know, we're just going to do that today. We're just going to productionize an entire end to end workflow of uh, data engineering. That's, yeah. That's that's lovely though. I do I do take offense to the fact that you're using SI versus AU and AG. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Say. I'm just saying, come on, periodic table elements. Come on, man. Jeez. I mean, the fact that I'm even I'm agreeing to call it raw, what gold, civil, bronze rather than raw base curated. Ugh. Ugh. Fine. But it's easier. It's it's the medallion <laughs> architecture. That's why it's called the medallion <laughs> architecture, right? Everybody remembers bronze, silver, gold, but or do we want to get into debate on that too? <laughs> Wait, no, we're not. We're not touching that. We're... Okay, fair enough. Fine, 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 fine. Okay, we do not okay. have time. We need to get onto things. All right. Well, hopefully that's. Hopefully that makes sense. That's the plan. 
Yes. We're going to take some things that we've already done and we're going to put it into Delta Live tables and that will look after the dependency between these things. It'll look after the automatic running of this stuff. It'll look after the running these things called expectations, which is going to check some data quality for us and allow us to monitor the data as it's flowing through. It's still going to use auto loader. So we're still using the file notification queue and all that good stuff that we set up. And it's doing that end to end. Go. So one thing as uh, Simon's trying to set things up, the one thing to call out, the part of the reason why we're talking about Delta Live tables is because the context is that we want to make the code that you're building, the pipeline you're building, independent from the infrastructure that you're actually building it against. So whether you're doing this in development or the test or production, whether you're using a small set of nodes, a large set of nodes, a different cloud provider, whatever else, the context is that you want to make that set of configurations separate from the code that you're writing, right? And so that's what Delta Live, Live Tables actually handles for you. The, 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 this actual decoupling of the code from the actual infrastructure. And so that's part of the reason why we feel that this is an important aspect to talk about because what when, when you start building a lot of these distributed systems, underneath the covers, you end up needing to know what the infrastructure is, like the number of nodes you're working with and all this other stuff, right? Or what cloud provider you're using. So if you're, it's possible for you to decouple that knowledge, the infrastructure from the actual code base, then, and, and let us in essence handle automatically for you what the, uh, to basically adapt the infrastructure that you have, then you get to focus exactly on what you really want to do, which is the data processing itself. Unless you're a massive nerd who likes tinkering with clusters and nodes. I, I, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Uh, I'm quite the opposite. I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that, but I'm also saying there is an advantage to not needing to know that no, too. Exactly. That's, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yes. And for, for us, we see it kind of really fits when you've got like sort of all the emerging architectures, you've got data mesh kind of everyone's talking about, you've got domain owned data products. And actually saying, well, you can have the specialist engineering team who are in the nuts and bolts and are working with all the deep, low, lower level engineering -y stuff. And you can have the people who just need to get some data right and they understand the data modeling and they just want to have some pipelines. You can have a mix of those things if you want. It's just another tool in your bell that lets you do data engineering in a standardized, easier way, which makes entire sense. Absolutely. All right, let's dive into the code then. Woo okay, cool. So this, this bad boy is our auto loader notebook. So we built this in a previous video, go check the playlist if you weren't around. So we're getting a load of details from a secret scope. We're building out a load of config about how we want our cloud files to work. Cloud files is the file format that we need put in for auto loader to work. So auto loader with directory, with the service principle, with the resource groups. This is going to set up the stuff in Azure in this case. That means it's going to watch for new files coming in, going to keep that nice and automated. We had a load of stuff to do with Drift because we set it up to use schema evolution mode, manage Drift and all that stuff. We built a data frame, passing that stuff in. We appended a new column so we could tell what file it came from, and then we wrote it down. So this is actually our starting piece. We're going to convert this into a Delta Live table. So I'm going to clone this. It's going to be called my DL thing, DLT hink. Thing? Sure, that'll do. Okay, so we have a notebook ready to go that we can then start working with. So let's start pulling this apart. We still need all of that initial gumph. That kind of, how do I connect? What's my service principle? All that information, you know, it's not going to magically know that stuff. So actually, I'm going to just bundle all this stuff up into the top. I'm going to take all of that. That's our set things up. So the autoloader works. That's only if you're using autoloader, only if you're doing it kind of via this fancy cloud notification kind of way. So we're going to keep that as it is. So Delta Live Tables has some specific things that we need to put in. And I think what we're going to do, so I reckon because the this early part, the bronze side, we don't really care too much about that. So what we can do, we can actually make that a view. So we can have those two as tables. So people can go and query the silver layer. They can go and query the gold layer. But we're not going to go and query the bronze layer. So we're going to make that a view. So we'll do a Delta Live table view to start off with that we can then replace this whole thing with. So that whole data frame, we're going to go, well, that, we're not doing that anymore. What we want to do is to put a Delta view in there, or Delta Live table of view. 
So I'll copy in some things in. Need to import DLT. So we need to instantiate that. When we're going to do this, we're going to hook it up to a Delta Live table job. And that's going to use that. So it's going to have, look for certain function decorators in here to know that we're doing a Delta Live table. So we do a new DLT, a new view. We decide what the view is called. Any, any preferences? Bronze. Bronze rating? Perfect. That, that looks gorgeous, dude. Sure. Okay. That's it's upsetting you. <laughs> underscores? No underscores. Oh. I don't. Um, I, I don't believe anybody's discussed them. In fact, I think we're good here. Okay. Just, just waiting for the comments to explode. Going, <gasps> that's true. That's true. Causation, that's true. not camel pace. Underscores. Ah. Well, that's true. Actually, that that yeah. But I think they're okay with bronze updates just because uh, since the Olympics just happened, so there was a call out. Actually, yeah. Since the Olympics season just happened, yeah, it actually makes sense. So just saying, yeah, I think you're fine. Yeah. Okay. So we build a function saying this is going to be our incremental bronze. The table, well, the view itself is going to be called bronze ratings. So we need to return something. So this is looking to have some kind of data frame returned. So we can do actually the same thing we originally did. We can take a lot of that. And we can say, well, this is going to fit inside our function. We're still creating a data frame. We're still doing that same stuff. We're still loading it from the same place. We're still passing in that cloud files config. We're still using the same drift config. All of that hasn't changed. I don't know why I've, my formatting for the original one, it just upsets me. Ah, ah, what is this? Ah. Um, so we're still Spark. We're doing a read stream because it's coming from cloud files. Using that, using that, using that, using that. That is all good. And then what we actually did inside the original, we had that thing. So we're going to go and add in that input file name. We can do that here as well. That's absolutely fine. So we can build that up. So we're still returning the data frame. So this whole function just returned to data frame. But we're just reusing what we originally did. We're still using that same, the whole autoloader stuff, all the config, all the things that we actually cared about are still baked into it. So we've replaced that. We no longer need the bit down there. We can get rid of that. I can't actually see what you guys can see. Let's make sure that everyone can see things. Yeah, it looks good. And then this bottom bit, the actual writing out, we're not going to do anymore. So Delta Live Tables are going to do that for us. So we don't need that. Done. Get rid of that. Get rid of that as well. That's kind of all we need. So we've got our, how do we connect to stuff? How does autoloader actually work? And then we've got our bronze table, incremental, building it out that way. Make sense? All seem good? It, Nothing this crazy? seems excellent. It seems exactly. Hopefully the code works, but yes. Hopefully the code works. When does it not work first time? Do I do I need to bring that up? Do, do, do you want me to bring that up? Do you want me to bring that up? No, 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 no we're, we're fine. We're just all good. We, we did we did this live. Remember, you 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 forgetting this thing, right? <laughs> okay. Before I even test it, because the thing with Delta Live tables, when you're in development mode, the first time actually the first time you do it, it takes a while to spin the cluster up. Um, so let's it's not going to do anything because we've only done a view. Will it actually start the cluster if it's only a view? I think it actually does, by the way. Hmm. Well, but actually, I'm going to put in the silver. I'm going to put in the yeah, silver. Yeah, you know what? You know, to be safe, try. let's put in the silver. Yeah, to be safe. Yeah. yeah. Um, because as well, this is going to take a little while to do the first load. Because the true. thing I built has been putting in ratings and ratings and ratings every day for the past five months. There's I a think ton so. of tiny JSON files, so it takes a few minutes to actually read everything on the tiny little cluster we've got. <laughs> oh. From experience. So we're going to do another table. So we're going to say the next one is that TLT. This time we're doing a table. So we're not doing a view anymore. So this is actually going to land it as a delta table and write it to the storage that we tell it to. So the name's going to be, let's call this our silver ratings. So a bronze ratings, which is a view, silver ratings, which is no longer a view. It's a table that's going to be written down. And then we can dive in and go. So our definition for that, we're going to keep this incremental as well when we do it. And this is going to be silver. OK, so the things yes. that we did in there, uh, we did have uh, in our silver one, I've kind of just recreated what we did in SQL. I've recreated out. So I'm going to just pull this across. Perfect. And while, while he's doing that, the, the quick call out, by the way, is that 
you we could have also done this in SQL, by the way. So this is with Delta Live tables. You know, we're choosing to use Python as for this particular example, but we could have written this whole thing in SQL as well. So if you prefer using SQL, you're more than welcome to do it. It's just in our particular example, especially for, for using things like regex replace and all this other stuff, it was just funner. Yes, that's the term I'm using, funner, to oh, no. use. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, uh, all right, fair enough. But yeah, so like, um, basically we had a whole file name thing being built up and I was having a play with the data going, right, what's the data actually look like? And I realized that we didn't have the name of the series anywhere. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was held inside the file name. So the well, file name was a big, long string. And yes. so I've kind of token that up. I've split it out by the, the file kind of um, slash your container folder name, pulled that out. So we're just, I'm basically doing a little bit of data cleansing. So going into raw, we weren't doing anything. We're just bronze. Going into our bronze table, we're just going to take the data, put it down. We're not doing anything special. Picking that up and putting it into our silver table, we're saying, okay, we need to clean some stuff up. Let's add some columns that are derived from the file name. Let's make sure this is a nice, clean, tidy table people can actually use. So I'm pulling out the rating value and pulling out the date that it applied to by doing a little bit of cleansing of that as well. And I'm pulling out the name of the series. Oh, nothing crazy, a little bit of data frame manipulation-y stuff. I'm just building it into that same thing. Now, the other thing that we'd normally see do happening in that silver layer is data quality. So we've got a few fixes. I've got a few things I'm actually doing to to fix things up. Um, but in our original, kind of in that SQL script, we're saying that it was really bad if people didn't cast enough votes. So do we, do we have, I uh, don't even have the SQL script that we're doing today. So we're saying that if the vote threshold, like there's an IMD votes is one of the, 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 the columns in that table. And if it's less than 50, we don't really care. It's not a really a real thing. So I grabbed two expectations. The expectations we need to do in between here, it's a little decorator we add into the table. So we're saying I'm defining a new table. Here's some comments. Here's the function that actually returns that table and defines what that table is. And we have these two decorator functions we can put in, which gives us our expectations. So I'm saying one is I expect, I'm not going to stop anything. I'm not going to fail. I don't want to kick out the rows, but I expect that every row should have more than 50 votes. So we're taking this IMDB votes. We're casting it as an int, and we're saying that should be more than 50. It should be. If it's less than 50, it's not a real vote, right? Um, but then we're saying if we also, we can't just have NA. It's if it's got no votes, that means nothing. It's not, what's the point of a rating if I don't even have a vote? So the ones that we don't have a vote, kick those out. Just reject those entirely. The ones that do have a vote, but there's, there's not that many of them, then sure, we'll keep them in, but we'll keep track of it as a data quality rule. So we've got different data quality rules. We can either have things that are like, that's going to break, just break the whole thing and throw an alert, or don't break, but just quietly get rid of those rows. We don't want to see them because they're not real. Or leave the rows in, but just keep track of it. Monitor it. Tell us how many rows met, failed to meet that expectation. So that is our silver table. Uh, it, the other important thing to note is that these are both incremental tables. So in the view, I'm using read stream because it's a cloud files. In the server one, I'm using read stream because it's using, it's basically streaming from the previous, uh, the view. So that means each time it runs, rather than try and drop the original table and replace it with the new values, it's going to go and just incrementally stream from one to the other, keeping track of what it has read and what it hasn't read, using streaming, using checkpoints, using Delta streaming, all that good stuff built into how it's working. That's the plan. Now that's just going to work, right? Well, absolutely, completely, okay. no problem at all. Yeah, yeah, of course. <sighs> okay, fingers crossed. <laughs> what could possibly go <laughs> wrong? Okay, so going into Delta Live Tables, going to create a new pipeline. So our pipeline name is going to be. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, well, it would be good. This is our gold rating pipeline. I uh, uh, can't do that, right? I can't have spaces. I'm not allowed spaces. I actually forget. I think you're allowed them, actually. Actually, I should know this. Okay. <laughs> Gold ratings. I'll be fine. All right. Fair enough. Okay. So I'm going to take our DL thing. And that's the notebook that contains the code, the one that we're working with currently, that we want to go and do that. We don't need any additional libraries. We're not using anything. 
config, we're not, we haven't parameterized everything. It's nice and simple, so we can just go with that. Target, oh, that's new. It's just been added. It used to have target. So target is the database that's going to be, we're going to add to. So in Hive, when these things land, it's going to register these tables with Hive. Where do we want to register them? So let's call it ratings. So everything we define as a table will automatically be added to this new Hive database called ratings. The bronze one, because it's a view, won't be added and we won't see that. It just exists inside stuff. Storage location. Uh, what have we mounted it as? I think it's mountain slash lake, I think we've got it as. Uh, I mean, we can either prop it there. Like the mount, that's where we're going to store the data. So we, we can either do that or we can actually just leave it as default and let it put it wherever it wants to put it. Oh, it's fine. We called it mountain lake because then we can go and have a look at it in, inside the lake itself. Fair enough. Well, let's do that. Lake. Let's call it uh, thing oh, ratings. ratings. Oh, thingy. Sure. Thingy ratings. Cool. That'll be fine. We're nothing about uh, I reckon we'll leave it as triggered for now. <laughs> yes. I, like... All over naming conventions. Professional. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then we've got minimum maximum workers. That's right at the bottom. Let's bring that up a little bit so we can see it. Yeah. So we're going to leave yeah. it as triggered for now. We're, gonna, we're not going to have this permanently turned on and streaming. Otherwise, we'll run out of money. Uh, so let's yes. leave it on triggered yeah. mode. And we don't need a lot of workers. Oh, it'll scale. It'll figure it'll out. It'll file. It'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Going to create that. The thing that I do immediately, what button do I press immediately, Danny? Development. Hit development. Ah. Hit development. Yeah. In development mode, we're safe. Like the big so, thing, if you're developing something and you want to try it and then fix it and then try it and then fix it and try it and fix it because it never works first time. Development mode means it keeps the cluster alive for a little bit so you can just hit go a few times and not have to wait for it to start the cluster again. Development. Way forward. Cool. Okay. So our settings are all good. Pointing out a bit of uh, storage we can get to. It's using a good cluster. We've got our notebook path. All right. Then we can just hit go. Let's do it. Dun, dun, dun. All right. This is going to take like four or five minutes. So it's going to start true. up a job cluster, pass out what we're doing inside that notebook, figure out if that makes any sense, and then go. So I reckon while that's happening, we've called it gold ratings. So let's go put in a quick gold table. Sure, why not? Yeah. Okay. So let's let's leave that running there. Let's go. Oh, let's just duplicate that table. Okay. Oops, not testing. That one. Okay. So right down at the bottom, we've got our silver table. I'm sure it won't mind if I just add things to it mid run, right? Uh. Eh. we'll find out because you know how it works where it depends on when it actually grabs the notebook, right? So, Yeah, okay, let's let's go to the here's one I made earlier and we can talk about that. <laughs> Ruin the magic, peek behind the curtain to what I was doing last night in a panic going, oh yeah, we need to test this works. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but that's in point just to provide context to everybody that's actually on this call that if anybody had logged in earlier would have recognized we actually didn't start this till Monday night when we didn't even realize that the live tables was not enabled on their cluster. So minor technicality. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I should probably actually make the demo for tomorrow and then. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would probably be <laughs> well, no. sort of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be helpful, wouldn't it? Of all yeah. things. So yeah. Yeah. We were, yeah. we were about to tell Karen, Hey Karen, sorry, we're going to have to cancel this because no, no, so fortunately, fortunately we didn't have to do that. So we're good. And by the way, I am actually monitoring the 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 pipeline on the off the background and and seeing and it's still got that little blue wheel spinning so it just does that why thinking so yeah, please, it's thinking please can I have some clusters please yes yes maybe maybe they kicked us off and because they didn't like us anymore you never know but again let's focus on the gold table let's focus on the positives here <laughs> all right so gold table I just in a quick place so if we were doing things if you wanted to have a competition right if you wanted to say, of all the series that we've added in there, uh, which has got the best rating? So yes. of all the seasons, of all the episodes, which thing is going to have the maximum rating on IMDb? Oh, and actually, oh, there's news. Since we started doing this, over the past, I think just over the past two weeks, I've watched three seasons of The Expanse. You've yes. sold it to me. Excellent. I have started yes. watching it. We have yes. plowed through so much of it. Pretty good. 
it, it is. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty damn yeah, yeah. So, so by the way, this entire series is just as, as an FY is an excuse for me to go ahead and say, y'all need to watch the expense. Yes. You might not like Amazon because of, you know, Jeff Bezos and all not a knock on them, but you gotta watch the expense. Seriously. That is <laughs> unequivocally the best show period. Yes. And I hadn't watched it at all. And then obviously seeing all the ratings it was getting and seeing how, how effusive you are about it. It was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to go have to watch that. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and season four, by the way, is a bit of a switch on you, but it's actually still amazingly good, by the way. And then season five merges the two, like season three and season four back together. And then you're going like, oh my goodness. Yeah. So it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So apologies. Yes, this this is me uh, accusing. So let's let's go back to the old table. I apologize. Yes, I mean it's fine, right? So yeah. one of the things that came out, I think, only came out last week, week before, is <laughs> that now in the middle of Delta Live Tables, we can do the classic mix and match of Python and SQL. That's right. So it yes. used to be either used all SQL or used all Python, uh, and now we can say I want a data frame that's using Spark SQL. So I'm still using all the Python syntax. But then here's a SQL query I wanted to turn into a Delta Live table. Now, the thing to note, this is using live dot subreading. So this is actually sort of referring to the table name as a live data set. So rather than pointing to like a, something in, um, sitting in uh, Hive, the target for this is going to be our gold ratings. Did we call it ratings? Mm-hmm. Gold ratings, something? It's not looking at that registered Hive table. It's looking at the name of a data set that is within the current Delta pipeline or Delta live table pipeline. So oh, by the way, exactly. as a quick call out, it appears we have a problem with the code. <gasps> I know! Sorry. Oh my good God, what? How dare you? Uh, okay, well, let's see what we're wrong. What, what do we do wrong? Well, why don't you look at the error? Because it, that's a great thing of the errors are there. So it failed to resolve the silver ratings and because it was looking for a bronze rating source. Mm. Mm. Ah, but we didn't create it as bronze rating source, did we? I changed the name of it. <laughs> you did. You changed the name of it. So you need to go back to the original <laughs> notebook and change it back. <laughs> so we had bronze rating in there. And in here, I'm saying read from bronze rating source. Oh. I decided to change the name of things. Ugh. My goodness. Oh, so close. How dare you? And then now you can click on start again. And because, because Simon did this in development mode, thank goodness we don't have to wait for the start of time for the cluster again because it's already there. And so this is, ladies and gentlemen, obviously a live demo. <laughs> Unless we had a whole contrived, I mean, I made that mistake so I can show you how easy it is to retry development. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. I, I made a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you are British, so it, it, and I'm Canadian, so I, I guess it's possible for us to contrive a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? How dare you? Uh, how right. dare I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that looks happy. So we've got bronze yes. ratings. So that's the view that it's found. And you can see it's actually past the JSON. It's managed to do the auto loader stuff. It's going off. It's talking to auto loader. It's reading all the stuff got silver ratings. It's got all that stuff in there. You can see it's got our derived things. So the name of the source file, it's got that series name, rating date, rating value. They're the three things that we had in that data frame to say, pass the file name, bring those things out, add that onto the end of our thing. That looks good. Looks like it's working. I mean, that's gonna, I so. that is going to take a minute or two because it's yeah. kind of reading a few thousand tiny, tiny, tiny JSON files. Um, so that's going to do that. Pull it up. We can check that in a second to see if it's run. I'm so annoyed it didn't run first time because I got the name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, by the way, as we're waiting for it to finish, uh, Atik actually brought up a really good question, okay? So it actually has to do with the fact that uh, you are, you know, sorry, we, I, I will take blame too here. Um, we, we are building this, the bronze as a view, not as a table. And so the, ta- the data by definition He's saying it's not persistent because it's a view. So when you're accessing that bronze view, will you potentially see performance issues? And hopefully with the silver table, um, you're not going to see that basically. So what's the advantage uh, of bronze is modularity and segregation of transformations. Like what, what, why do this bronze view and how do you avoid the performance issues? Do you want to chime in first or would you like me to chime in first on this one? I mean, I can just say from 
It's because we didn't need to keep the data. So it's not going to go back to the entirety of all the data that's kept in there each time, because it's actually going to, it's still going to checkpoint it. It's still going to work out the fact that actually it's already read some of those files. So each time it goes back and runs, it's not going to read everything to work out that view and then take the whole of that view and put it into the silver layer. It's still just going to go, right, any, any files I haven't read yet that have landed in the autoloader since I last read, put those through that view. So it's just like it's just injecting a little point of logic in the middle of it that still keeps the stream efficient. But it's, did I want to keep another copy of the data in my lake at that raw layer to keep that thing? Now, honestly, in an enterprise like for, for a client, yeah, absolutely, we would keep that bronze layer and we'd keep all that data there so that we've got history, so we've got replayability, so we can investigate. Why did the silver end up like that? We've got all that detail in the bronze layer. For this case, we don't need it, so I've not bothered keeping it. Right, and, and, and ex exactly to Simon's point, just to add a little bit to this, that replay is actually super important, right? The idea that you can go back and recognizing, for sake of argument, if we had made mistakes in the transformation logic from bronze to silver to goat, I can go back to the bronze table in its entirety and reprocess all of the data using the new logic if it came down to it, right? As opposed to needing to, uh, in the case of this view, obviously it would be much more complicated to do. But for the purpose of this particular demo, just to show the fact that we're doing incremental processing, yeah, this is why it makes a ton of sense. But yeah. again, your environment may be a very different situation. It's prototypical of an enterprise environment. Yeah, we're probably not, we're probably gonna make sure it's a table, um, but we're probably not gonna modify that table much either because it's the, uh, we, we don't want to interfere with the writing of the data into that table. We actually want that data to persist as fast as we possibly can. And then from a performance and transformation perspective, deal with that at the silver and gold levels. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, anything else that, that I might have missed? So I guess the, the reason I, I mean, in like, that case, why would you use views? Uh, and so we kind of use views for reusable logic, right? So if you wanted a point in there where you actually want to take the data and then use it over there, use it in there, use it over there, a view is really good just to put in the middle to, could that bottle be any bigger? <laughs> just showing off, oh, my, my little bottle. <laughs> hey, so yeah, if you it's, want to important reuse things, why to stay, it's important to stay hydrated, man. Come on. Yeah, that, that is a good point. Yes. Oh. This, if we are nothing, if we're nothing in this entire episode, it's about the expanse and staying hydrated. <laughs> On that note, so <laughs> because this is running now, oh, there we go, it's completed. Yes, Woo oh, we have a green circle. There we, we go. Did not really Things are working. This up. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay, so if we go up here, we can see the various different things that happen in the flow. We can see silver ratings is completed. We can open that up and see what happened inside there. Lots of things, it did things, it did things. And we can see our expectations. So we can see there were so many records that failed. We've got a minimum vote threshold, that's our less than 50 votes. There's 308 records. Okay, we can keep an eye on that. That's not too many, we can still keep going. Things that didn't have a rating, we saw there were 194. So we've dropped 194 records. They didn't make it from that view into our silver layer because they were not good enough and we had no value there. We kept 308 that didn't have a lot, but we can just monitor that and keep it in eye at the time. So we set our expectations and our expectations are being managed. All good. All right, so we're gonna take our little pre-made bit of gold. I'm gonna slap that in and check the names because I've probably changed the names again. So let's go down here, add in our gold table. So it's expecting to be called silver ratings. Silver ratings, same thing, consistency. There uh, we go. And all we're doing in here is going spot, we can uh, max out degree ratings, best rating. We're just doing a quick aggregation. We're not doing anything particularly fancy. Now, we're also not streaming here. So we're not doing read stream. This is not an incremental. So what this is going to do, each time we run it, it's essentially going to drop and replace that whole table, recalculate it from scratch from that silver layer. So we've got from landing into bronze, into streaming, into silver, is kind of this constant stream of pushing stuff through, keeping it nice and tight and efficient. But then because we're doing aggregates, because we're kind of kind of managed to aggregate a data set, we're just going right, like, trash that, replace that each time, run it from scratch and rework out what it's called. So we're gonna have a table called top ratings that's gonna get created. And actually with our silver, because that's now finished, we can look in data, we can see in ratings, we've got silver ratings. So it's gone and created that table for us. Our silver layer is 
properly logged. We've got data behind it. We go and see what it looks like. Uh, while that's loading, I'm going to kick this pipeline off again, and it should now revisit that notebook, look at it again, go, oh, there's now a goal table. And then we'll expect to see that appear in a second. And then we can go and manage that. There we go. So we've got our silver table, got all the things in there. And we can see our load of data that we've got going into silver. Lots of ratings. You can see that was our big long source file. And that's got the gangs of London and various things hidden in there. And that was what we've done. We've pulled it out. So we've actually got a nice series name, rating date that we can actually use to manage this stuff. Well, so, you, you don't like reading Earl encoded names. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, low, low on your scheme of things. Fair enough. Okay, got it. <laughs> okay, so you can see that has now added our top ratings goal table. And that's kind of a nice, efficient little thing. You can see it's worked out the dependencies of that. It knows where things live in that list. Where is it? Ah, I see it's nice and efficient. So what's the first run? Because it was actually having to go and do all of the autoloader and read everything that's ever come through. That took a few minutes. This is rerun from scratch all the way through again because it was incremental. So it's only taken a few records into that silver ratings. So you can see how many records went through. No records came through because no new files have arrived. But then going into gold, you can see it went through got 246 records. So it's completely recreated that. And that was nice and quick and efficient. So now let's do it. Look in data. Got top ratings is now being created. And there we go. We have our nice aggregates of our data, we can go and have a look at it. Why have only got burn notes in there? <laughs> and that's a great show. I, I do agree with that. But we, we should actually go ahead and actually redo it, order by ratings. You want to order by, you don't order by going into the table. You do that query. No, time. I didn't say order by table. I said that we query it. I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh my goodness. OK, so yeah, we could just make a, make a quick little notebook. We could make a nice SQL notebook because we just I don't suppose we haven't got Databricks SQL enabled over here. No. Next time. Okay, let's go make thing. Oh, hey, uh, as you're doing that, uh, Arne from um, LinkedIn had noted that he's not seeing the development or production buttons uh, as well as pipelines in your workspace. You'll actually have to talk to your um, Databricks uh, SA or AE to enable it. Currently, uh, Delta Live Tables is in private preview. Um, sorry, public preview, not private preview. Public it's in preview. gated public preview. Thank you. Gated public preview. Yeah, I, I, so we're I allowed to talk it. about it, but you yes. need to ask if you want it. Exactly. So in other words, it's not, <laughs> auto, it's not automatic, but you work through your Databricks representative and then they can enable it for you. There we go. Did I say that correctly? I think I did. Yes. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Perfect. Okay. So. And thank you, Nish, from YouTube. Uh, they, they say the way you're presenting the cup. Uh, uh, presenting this and explaining the topic looks awesome. I, I will give hats off to Simon for this. After all, he's the one who's doing the vast majority of the presenting. <laughs> he's the one who in a panic went, oh God, I didn't do what I said I would. Ah! It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it works. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's just actually check then what is, what has the best rating yes, of all the see. things? What, what has? Is it Game of Thrones season eight? I certainly hope not. No. Oh, but okay. What? Re remove the. What is NA doing in there? I thought we yeah, got rid of this. I thought we were having rid of them, dude. All right, now I'll look into that. Oh. Okay. Game okay, of Thrones season one, season no, one season episode one. nine. Okay, that's okay. Season one is fine. I can understand that. But then, a bunch of the expanse, of course. <laughs> and then the expanse. Several, several episodes yeah. of the expanse. Bit of one division. Bit of expanse. Bit of Game of Thrones. Okay, we have data. Yes. Do you know what's sitting behind here? Because I've been tracking these ratings every day, um, it'd be interesting what we can do probably in a future episode is we can have a look at the trends. Has anything changed? Has any ratings yes. kind of changed as they've gone? I'll add some That's new true. series into it. So some series that are currently airing. And so we can see some episodes kind of appearing onto that list as they go and see how they track. And then, yeah, we can start to do some data analysis. But that, as it stands, is a end-to-end -end data engineering pipeline using data, Delta Live Tables. Huh? It, that's wonderful. And I think, you know, 
what we'll naturally, as Simon's calling out, is we'll shift to is doing now, we can shift more toward the data analytics and also the data science. So let us know, like chime in either through here or tweet us or whatever else to let us know what is your preference for the next session. But uh, hopefully this gives you some context on how you're supposed to go ahead and build your uh, production pipeline using Delta Live tables. Okay. Uh, hey, we've got some questions coming in now. Um, so I'm going to, I'll be, I'll ask the question and then you can tell me if you want to answer it or you want me to answer it. So from Tiago through the Zoom LinkedIn channel, um, um, sorry, through Zoom, not LinkedIn, through Zoom. Um, if you want to use Delta Live tables for three gold tables with dependencies, does all the code need to be in one notebook or is it possible to have a notebook per gold table? Oh, so I've not tried this. So you probably know better than I do. I but, do, in fact. I, I can probably oh, tell you up front oh. that you in generally would want to actually put everything into a single notebook because the idea is that you want to package everything up. Now, it doesn't mean you can't use other notebook dependencies if you're actually like copying and pasting code. But in general, the context of the way the pipeline works is that you're to use one notebook. Again, you could conceivably use more, but at least if you're starting off, I would highly suggest you actually use one notebook to do it. Um, and then subsequently, when you're trying to modularize things, then you can go ahead and do uh, add other notebooks to it. The, the thing say, to let's note- Let's find out. <laughs> by all means, go for it. As, as, as Simon is proving my point that you can do it, the, the context is that it is normal to have, for example, for example, having one notebook where you have multiple uh, uh, notebooks, uh, 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 multiple pipelines coming out of it, actually. So, um, and multiple endpoints, like multiple silver tables, multiple gold tables, and potentially even multiple bronze tables, okay? So that's actually pretty normal to have inside a Delta Live table structure. So, this, so uh, that's why I'm su suggesting start off with one notebook first. And then once you recognize the fact that you need to modularize this thing, absolutely, yes, do exactly what um, Simon's doing now, which is you can edit the pipeline settings and you can actually add more notebooks because again, you're just, at that point now you're trying to modularize stuff. So yeah, makes sense. Ho What's hopefully the syntax that for jamming it in here? Uh, comma, um, oh, you know what, I forget. Add more paths? Comma path or is it, uh, is that an array? I actually forget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, that one I forget. I'm gonna do, possibly. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna use this thing and say, I'm gonna take an existing thing I'm going to add a notebook library. So I've got that button. So it's obviously supported to just give, give me another button. Uh, I'm going to put some garbage in here. Uh, that's all optional. I'm going to create that, switch it to developer mode. Sure. I'm going to edit those settings. I'm going to steal that oh, whole thing. Okay. <laughs> Aha, there, there you go. go. So it was an array under library. That's what it was. Okay, I was trying to remember where Yeah, it, it just wasn't an array yet in yes. the one that I was doing. Oh, no, yes. it is an array. Okay. Oh, it is. Oh, okay, well, there you go. All right. Uh, Remove the library. No, you got double library. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that looks close enough. Yeah. I'm sure that'll be fine. Yeah. So what that should do is create a second gold table that's dependent on the silver rating. So we should see runs into silver and then two gold tables yeah. going off it that are created across separate things. Yes. But like I said, I do highly advise when you're starting off, to initially go ahead and put this all in a single notebook so you get used to the flow. But once you start modularizing, absolutely, I get the idea of doing exactly what you're doing. So yeah, hopefully that answers your questions. Oh, yeah, sorry. Cool, actually, Simon, there is a question that's applicable directly for you, actually. So just because Ooh. I know that you love using ADF. So you know, can you create uh, using a pipeline using ADF as well? Right, and so let, why don't we talk a little bit about the scenarios where ADF makes sense and scenarios where DLT makes sense? I don't know. Don't you don't know? know? No, no, no. The context being like, oh, sorry, you don't really use ADF to, to start a Delta Live Tables pipeline. No. I'm just, I, no, no, I mean more like the scenarios where ADF makes a little bit more sense oh. versus DLT. That's all I went in. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, in terms of currently where we're at with DLT, um, DLT is not quite there for the, I want to do the same thing many, many times and I don't want to have to set it up yet. So that's kind of like, so in, if we're using, um, data factory, so as a quick one, there we go. 
We've got our nice two tables. It's red, two separate notebooks. That other ratings is only to find in one notebook. So yes, you can split it over two. Danny said, absolutely. Start off with one. And only when you get to doing more advanced stuff, you can split and modulize your code if you need to. Um, if we switch over this way, so kind of that kind of, I want to do, I want to do a thing and then do a thing and then do a thing. Very kind of DLT really good at that and building out dependencies when there's kind of like a known set of stuff to do. Um, what it's not like good at yet and which data factory is actually very good at is if I've got a notebook and that notebook can be super generic and just accept a few set parameters, right? So the table name or the entity name or some metadata. And then in data factory, you can call a notebook. And so very often we do the get a list of things to do and that'll bring back like a list of like here's a hundred different tables that need loading. And then in data factory, you can do it for each. It's like for each thing in this list, run this notebook in parallel with a parameter. So you can just go, I load these hundred tables and just span it out and you build one thing and then just use it many, many, many times in parallel. So for, we use that a hell of a lot currently. I mean, so certainly if I'm in Azure, then that's the way you do it. Other things, I mean, if you're in AWS Glue, using Airflow, any kind of orchestration tool, you can do that kind of, here's a list of stuff, for each thing in this list, go and do it. Now you can't do that kind of mad recursive, is a big list of stuff to do yet in Delta Live Tables, I assume, maybe in the future. But if that's yeah, it, the kind of pattern that you're working with, then currently, yeah, you'd need things like Data Factory. Yeah, and to call, and, and it's a good call up by Simon. And yes, that is definitely coming. I, I freely admit I don't know what the time frame is, but that's why it's in Gated Public Preview as opposed to GA, because there are things exactly like this, which have been repeatedly called out by beacons like Simon about the fact that, you know, that we actually need to get this included before we would go ahead and go GA, which is fair. Me complain about stuff repeatedly? No, 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 no. you would never <laughs> do that. I, I apologize for um, imp implying that, I apologize, oh, my, my bad. You and your British sensibilities. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, yet another question so I can get get us off that standpoint and then he doesn't have to smack me for talking about his British sensibilities. Um, do we need to optimize the live table for batch query performance? Is this taken care of automatically? And so the quick answer is actually, you don't actually need to do it because there actually is a, uh, there is actually a, a, a couple settings directly within Delta live tables that will automatically optimize the tables for you. So, so hopefully that helps things out a lot, especially when you click on production then that's actually automatically included, but you can also modify the settings or even the code base itself directly and just simply say, add a property, it's like auto-optimize and it'll auto-optimize for you. Anything else that I think we, we need to add? No, I mean, I think that makes sense. So again, yeah, it's, it's the table properties and about how you want auto-optimize and things to be applied and then switching into production if you wanted to automatically run a maintenance job every night to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Perfect. I think that actually covers all the questions. So we thank you very much, everybody, for using up 55 minutes of your time uh, with Simon and myself. Uh, like I said, like we said before, if you have any other questions, continue pinging us and uh, tweeting us directly. And also, do let us know if you want us to shift more toward analytics and data science. Right now, we're leaning more toward analytics first and then data science, but you never know. If you're all coming back, you want to see the data science first, then we can do that. We can talk about the ML Studio. By the same token, we, we were thinking, let's go ahead and maybe do a DB SQL thing too, right? That's what we're going to do, right, Simon? Yeah. Right, right, I think, yes? OK, cool. Right. I need a dashboard to prove this out. I, I can't read numbers. That's fair. Yes, my apologies. Yes, I, I agree with that. So, all right, Karen, why don't you take it away so that way we can stop talking. <laughs> well, thanks, Denny and Simon. It's always a pleasure having you too. Um, and thanks everyone for uh, sharing the session with us. Um, I just dropped the link to the series recording uh, in Zoom and LinkedIn. So uh, feel free to check out there. And also in the comments too, um, let us know what you, you want to see next uh, per Denny's comments. So uh, with that, I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and please take care. Awesome. Take care. Take care.